other students, this is Professor Watts, and as promised, I have prepared a uh, brand new tutorial on the homework problems that we have on comparative advantage with two countries, two goods, and proving how when we specialize and engage in the comparative advantage, both countries can have more of both goods, or to generalize, everyone can have more of everything, therefore free trade, baby, for the win. Okay, but let's work through one of these problems just for practice so we can... Um, be sure we know how to do this when we're all on the same page. And for this example, I took the template that we have um, that we have on the homework assignments and I actually took the example from David Ricardo's book. It's called The Principles of Political Economy and Taxation and you can see we can get this uh, full text on the Library of Economics and Liberty. And um, this is a classic example. Now he doesn't quite work the math the way we will. I've, I've changed the, the format of the problem to I think make it a little more straightforward for us. But nonetheless, he does talk about in this uh, chapter of the book, his main example is uh, England and Portugal trading uh, wine and cloth. Okay, so let's, um, let's put the example into our framework, which I have here, and you've seen this on the homework, you'll see something like this on the exam. And well, first off, what we want to do is look at these costs, and I put them in terms of dollar costs. Now, Ricardo originally had them in terms of labor, but I think it's a little more convenient for us to put it in terms of dollar costs. So here's what's happening. In England, it costs $12 per unit, and um, Ricardo used a unit of pipes of wine, and I said, I've never heard of that before. That's 126 gallon. So I could jot this down here, a pipe of wine. Okay, so anyway, it cost England $12 to make 126 gallons of wine. And then it costs England $10 to make, uh, let's say, a bolt of cloth, right? And then Portugal only takes them $8 to make a pipe of wine, and it only takes them $9 to make a bolt of cloth. And remember here, the money costs represent the land, labor, and capital resources that are needed to make either good. Now, Portugal, you might have noticed, has lower costs to make wine or cloth. They have what's what we would call the absolute advantage in wine and cloth. And why might that be? Well, if it's pro usually based on geography. In these kind of examples, Portugal is a, a more southerly climate, a warmer climate, so they have a longer growing season, so they can grow more grapes per acre, or they can grow more sheep per acre, so they can make more wine or cloth with a given amount of land, labor, and capital. right? But we're not interested in absolute advantage, remember, we're interested in comparative advantage. So let's go ahead first off and calculate the opportunity cost for each country of producing wine and cloth. Now, opportunity cost of wine, we're saying, if producing wine, how much cloth do you give up? So for England, the $12 that would be used to make wine, how much cloth could that make? It's 12, the $12 making wine, divided by the $10 it would take to make cloth. And we probably don't need a calculator yet, we can realize that that's 1.2, and it's 1.2 what? It's 1.2 units of cloth, 1.2 C. For cloth, the opportunity cost of cloth for England is the $10 it takes them to make cloth, how much wine could that have made? Well, that's 10 twelfths. And it's not even going to be 1. And I'll go ahead and bust out a calculator. Don't be afraid to use a calculator. Go ahead and bust that out. And let's see. It's uh, $10 to make cloth divided by the 12 over here that it takes to make wine. And so that's 0.83. And in this example, and you can do this on the homework as well and on the uh, midterm, I'm just going to round to the nearest tenth. That'll be close enough for us. We don't need to use a bunch of decimals. Okay, so England... Opportunity cost of wine is 1.2 cloth. Opportunity cost of cloth is 0.8 wine. Okay, opportunity cost for Portugal for making wine. Opportunity cost of wine for Portugal is the $8 it takes them to make a pipe of wine divided by the $9 that it would take to make cloth. So it's 8 ninths. 8 divided by 9. 0.88, let's just call that 0.9. That'll be close enough for our purposes here. And then opportunity cost of cloth for Portugal is the $9 divided by the 8. 9 divided by 8, 1.125, and we'll be safe if we just round that to 1.1, close enough for us for now. Uh, opportunity cost, remember, reveals comparative advantage. So if we want to look at wine first, and we want to say who has the lower opportunity cost, and that's Portugal. So Portugal has the lower opportunity cost here. They're, they'll specialize in wine. And then we look at cloth, and we'll say who has the lower opportunity cost, and England, at 0.8, lower than 1.1, has the lower opportunity cost in cloth. So we can identify here that Portugal has a comparative advantage in wine. Let's just write it like this, CA in wine, and England has a comparative advantage, CA in cloth. So we know that once we get to specialization, England is going to do more than half cloth, and Portugal is going to do more than half wine. Right, so we know that. We know we're going to have specialization. But before we get there, 
want to go into autarky, which is where each country tries to do everything by itself. And for our baseline, we'll just say half and half, just like we've always been doing. In my homework problems, I always just say, let's give each country $100 worth of both resources right here, and they're, they'll divide it evenly. So $50 each to cloth and wine. So how much wine can England make with $50 devoted to wine and $50? And I'll jot that in here. Okay, $50 devoted to wine, and wine costs them 12, so it's $50 divided by $12 per pipe. Again, don't be shy about using the calculator. I certainly don't know that off the top of my head, 50 divided by 12. 4.16, let's round that to 4.2. And then cloth, England has the other $50, and it costs them $10 per unit of cloth, 50 divided by 10, 50 divided by 10 is five. So England can make 4.2 pipes of wine and five bolts of cloth with its $100 divided evenly 50-50 between cloth and wine. Now let's go to Portugal, and the same thing for them, $100 worth of resources, so we're holding the resources constant for each country, 50 to wine, 50 to cloth. Okay, so $50 Portugal divided by the $8 per pipe of wine. $50 divided by eight, 6.25, we'll round that to 6.3. And then Portugal, $50 to make cloth, and cloth costs $9 per unit to make. So now it's 50 divided by nine. 5.55, let's round that to 5.5, 5.5 units. And we could put the units here, this would be you know, bolts of cloth. This would be pipes of wine. Okay, now let's add to see what our total is in autarky. 4.2 plus 6.3, 4 plus 6 is 10, and that would be 0.5, so 10.5. We have 10.5 pipes of wine in the world, or at least between these two countries. And then we have cloth, 5 plus 5.5. We have 10.5 bolts of cloth. Okay, so this is a baseline that we want to beat when it comes to specialization. So I'm going to highlight this right here. And I'm going to say, these are the numbers to beat. Can both countries, when they specialize, make more than 10 and a half units of wine and more than 10 and a half units of cloth? Okay, so that's the next step. Now we're going to move down to specialization and, and work this table. Where should we start? Because there's a lot of potentially correct answers here. Well, I did this earlier and I just did it with pencil and eraser and I had to erase a few times. It was pretty easy though. And what I, how I started it was I just said, I went back to look at the, uh, the absolute cost or the dollar cost and I said, you know, we know that Portugal has an absolute advantage in each, but where is uh, England's weakness less, so to speak? Which is England less bad at? Well, look, the costs in Portugal compared to England are a third less in, in wine. The difference is four. Four divided by 12 is a third less, so this is a difference of one third, so things are one third cheaper. But in cloth, it's only one tenth. The difference is one divided by 10, so here it's only one tenth cheaper. So England is comparatively less bad at cloth. So it often works out that the, the, the party that is less bad can, do, can go all out to its less bad product, and, and that's usually a way for us to achieve more of both. So I'm gonna start off by having England go all out to cloth. So I'll just go ahead and put a zero in here. And they're spending, by the way, zero of their $100. That leaves 100 of their $100 for cloth. So I'm, I'll just go ahead and kind of sneak that in right here. And how much cloth can they produce if each unit of cloth costs $10 worth of resources? Well, that's 100 divided by 10. So they're gonna make 10 bolts of cloth all by themselves. Okay, so 10 bolts of cloth and we need to beat 10 and a half. So if we could have Portugal make just, let's say one unit of cloth, uh, we'd already be ahead in cloth and then Portugal could use all the rest of its resources to make wine. So let's try that. Um, Portugal only needs to make one. So I'm gonna put the answer in first, one bolt. Now I have to work backwards and say how much of that of their $100 does that use up? Well, it only uses nine because it takes $9 to produce one bolt of cloth. So that only uses nine. And that leaves Portugal because remember, I held the resources constant at $100 worth of total resources. They use nine in cloth. Guess what? That leaves them 91 to make wine. And how much wine can they make with $91 left over that they have to make wine? Well, it's $8 per pipe of wine, so 91 divided by 8. And we get 11.4. Okay, now let's total up and see if we did indeed in specialization beat what we had in autarky and with wine. The England producing none, Portugal 11.4, so we've got a total of 11.4 pipes of wine. 
and indeed that's higher than the 10.5 we had in autarky so so far so good there a little smiley face here we know we're on to something and then with cloth we have now a total of 11 england's 10 plus portugal's 1 11 volts and yep higher than the 10.5 we had in autarky so excellent so we've got more of both goods now all that's left to do is to work out some uh, price at which uh, England can send a certain amount of cloth down to Portugal in exchange for a certain amount of wine. And we want to make sure we wind up with each country having more of each good. Okay, and we can, we can, we will have proven that trade makes everyone better off. So let's start with England. And you notice I've got the uh, columns for extra good and lacking good. What's the extra good that England has a lot more of due to specialization? Well, they have 10 units of cloth in special, in autarky, they only had five, so specialization gives them an extra five units of cloth, plus five, and that's up to five that they would be happy to trade in exchange for some wine. How much wine? Now they have zero with specialization. In Autarky, they had 4.2, so they'd like to get back to 4.2 or, or more, so greater than or equal to 4.2 wine. Likewise, Portugal. Uh, what's their extra good? Their extra good, of course, is wine. They have 11.4 wine after specialization, and they had 6.3 on their own in autarky. So let's do this again. Let's see how much extra does Portugal have. 11.4 minus 6.3. So Portugal has an extra 5.1 units of wine, so they would happily trade away up to 5.1 wine. And with cloth, Portugal now only has one, and they had 5.5, so they're lacking. They would want at least 4.5 units of cloth. More would be better, of course, so at least 4.5 units of cloth. Okay, now let's compare Portugal's lack of cloth. They want at least 4.5 units of cloth to England's surplus, if you will, or extra amount of cloth, which is 5. So let's just find a number between 4.5, what Portugal wants, and 5, the most that England's willing to give. And we can solve that, any number between there. You know, and we'll just go about halfway between. Let's go to 4.7, let's say. So 4.7 units of cloth are going to go from England to Portugal. And then let's look at the wine. England wants at least 4.2 units of wine. Portugal has up to 5.1 units that they're willing to trade. So let's just pick a number between 4.2 and 5.1. Oh, let's, you know, something about halfway between, uh, you know, maybe 4.7 again. So they trade 4.7 units of wine. This is wine, this is cloth. And the wine, of course, goes from Portugal to England. So final consumption then, we'll just, working from this from what they produce in specialization, and then after what they traded away or gained from trade, we'll see what they wind up with, and we'll just double check to make sure that's more than they had independently in autarky. So, England, with wine, start with nothing in specialization, but they gain 4.7 units from Portugal, so they're at 4.7. With cloth, England produces 10, but sells 4.7 of those to Portugal, so they wind up with 5.3. Okay, does England have more wine than they had way up here in autarky? England only had 4.2 in autarky. Now they've got 4.7. Check, England has more wine. And cloth, England had 5 in autarky. Now they've got 5.3. All right, England has more cloth as well. Portugal, okay, with wine, they, in specialization, produce 11.4, sell 4.7. What do they wind up with? 11.4, that's right here. And they sold 4.7, that's right there. So minus 4.7. So they wind up with 6.7. And then with cloth, Portugal produces one, gains 4.7 right here from England. So they wind up with 5.7. Okay, and compare, let's compare that to Autarky again. Portugal has 6.7 wine, and Autarky they only had 6.3. So Portugal has more wine. And in cloth, Portugal started in Autarky with 5.5. Now they've got 5.7. In fact, I like to write down you know, their plus 0.2 here. Uh, England is plus 0.3. I like to write down how much they gained. Uh, England and wine is plus 0.5, and Portugal and wine is plus 0.4. So you can see we got significant gains for both countries, both goods. And we can add these up just to make sure we used up all the uh, product. 4.7 plus 6.7, that's 10, and that's 1.4, so that's 11.4. 
and yep, that's the total we produced in, in specialization. So check, and then 5.3 plus 5.7, that's uh, 5 plus 5 is 10, and that adds up to 1, so that's 11. And yep, that's the total we produced in specialization. Right. So we have proven that both countries get more of both goods through trade. Or to generalize again, everyone gains from trade. Everyone gets more of everything. One of the most fundamental lessons of economics 